This lesson introduces virtualization. And typically when we think of virtualization, we think of server virtualization, the ability to create many, many different virtual machines on a single piece of physical equipment. This allows us to run multiple operating system instances and therefore different roles without requiring many different servers. Prior to server virtualization, each operating system and therefore application we ran in our data center required its own physical server, which often led to wasted resources as servers had to be provisioned for their worst case scenario, the time they were busiest used the most memory, the most CPU, and the most amount of storage. This cost a lot of money for both servers, for licensing, and for data center resources. With virtualization, we create these virtual machines that have their own resources built up from a physical server that can be changed really at any point in that server's life cycle. This gives us much better utilization of our resources, this is cheaper, and also we can provision these virtual servers much, much faster than the time it would take to provision a physical server. But server virtualization is not the only type of virtualization. Think of virtualization as anything that breaks the bonds between one layer and another. So server virtualization breaks the bond between the operating system and the hardware. But there is also session virtualization. For example, I may have a desktop and I'm going to run an application that's actually being run on a server in the data center. Perhaps it's not even just a desktop application. Perhaps it's an entire desktop environment with my start screen and system tray. Right now, I'm actually connected to a VDI environment. I'm running Windows 8 here. This is actually a virtual machine, which I can see because I'm using the Hyper-V network adapter, running in the data center. So that's one type, that's a desktop virtualization, VDI, a separate VM for each of the currently connected users running a client operating system. But session virtualization means that I can publish applications or those desktops. Here I'm going to launch Paint. This is actually running on a remote desktop session host. And it looks like it's running locally on my desktop. It's interacting, moving around on my local desktop. But in reality, it's running on the remote server. If I look at Task Manager, I can actually see that that remote desktop connection is hosting that paint resource, which is actually running on my RDS server. If I look at Task Manager and look at my usernames, I'll see John has an instance of MS Paint running, which is then being presented using remote desktop protocols to my local machine. So this is an example of session virtualization. And generally, session virtualization differs from VDI in that VDI, each user is connecting to their own virtual machine that's running a client operating system. So it's fairly heavy from a resource perspective because each user requires a complete VM with its own memory and CPU and a client OS. Session virtualization works by connecting to a server operating system and then each user has their own session within that shared OS. This means I can get far more users on a single piece of hardware, but the difference is really of one of isolation. With VDI, each user has their own virtual machine, their own operating system, so they can really do whatever they want. They could configure the operating system. It has no effect on other users who are connected to their own virtual machines running its own client operating system. With session virtualization, users are sharing that server operating system instance, but they're in their own session. They can't see the work of other users, but they are sharing the OS. This means you couldn't go and reconfigure the OS or reboot, you would affect everyone else. This is why session virtualization is a great fit for task-based workers, running line of business applications, Office, Internet Explorer. It has the same look and feel, but a VDI environment really gives a great environment for power users, for developers. People need to really modify and change that operating system. So we have VDI, we have session virtualization, really desktop virtualization, separating the user's experience, their environment, from the endpoint device they're using. This gives them great mobility and flexibility. Then we have the applications themselves. And while I said this was an example really of session virtualization, really this is an example of application virtualization. I'm separating the execution of the application from the operating system on which I'm using. Now, in this example, the application runs on a different machine. But there's also technologies such as AppV. AppV is an application virtualization solution that works by running the application locally on the operating system the user is using, but without installing the actual app. 
This seems very strange in principle, but essentially app V allows applications to be sequenced and that sequencing creates a single package with virtual file system, virtual registry and other resources that is then streamed down to a client device on demand and it runs in its own bubble, its own virtualized sandbox. So the application doesn't make any footprint changes on the operating system it's installed on. This is a great solution for very, very fast delivery of applications and for solving app-to-app -app compatibility challenges. There are other types of virtualization as well. If you think about my user environment, I have my operating system, which could be virtualized with session virtualization or VDI. I have my applications that could be virtualized with AppV or app publishing through remote desktop services. I have my data. My data may be redirected with folder redirection, so no matter what machine I use, I always see my home drive. I see my profile. That data is folder redirection and is data virtualization. My profile I just gave an example of might be using roaming profiles or UEV, user experience virtualization. That's separating my profile from my operating system. Once again, it's virtualizing that component. So it's any time we break these bonds and often you'll see all of these things come together. Anytime I require some kind of user experience virtualization, I'm going to use nearly all of those technologies together. Now, often when I think about virtualization, we think about our on-premise solutions, Hyper-V, for example, for our machine virtualization. But the public cloud is getting more and more focus. For example, Windows Azure is the Microsoft cloud-based solution that enables us to run virtual machines in the cloud in its infrastructure as a service offering. But also I can run my custom applications I've developed based on the Windows Azure platform using its platform as a service. I may even have a hybrid scenario. So hybrid is where I'm running some of my resource on-prem, some of it off-prem in the public cloud, and even be able to move resources from one to the other. Hyper-V and Windows Azure work very well together that they use the same virtual machine format. I can move virtual machines between Hyper-V and Windows Azure without having to change them. This concludes the lesson on the basic types of virtualization.